Hi, my name's Barry Crampton. Today I'm going to show you around our Skoda Superb. Then I'll take you for riding it. But first I'll tell you a little bit more about it. It's a 1.4 TSI S. 2012 on a 12 plate. Has done 47,312 miles. Fuel economy, urban, 31.4 miles per gallon. Extra urban, 52.3 miles per gallon. And combined is 41.5 miles per gallon. 0 to 60 time of 10.1 seconds. Top speed of 125 miles per hour out of a four cylinder, 123 brake horsepower, 16 valve engine. Six month road tax is 121 pounds and 12 months is 220. Very nice car, uh, certainly for its age, looks very bright. Recent set of tires on it, multi-spoke alloys. Um, it's just a nice car, it's, it's just a nice family car. Nothing special about it, pretty boring to be honest, but there's a lot to be said for that. There's not so much to go wrong. Um, it drives nice, it's economical, and it's, it's massive. There's loads of space in the back. The first time I went in one of these, I was in Prague and it was a taxi. And I got in the back of it and I thought it was a, I thought it had been, um, you know, an extended limo. Uh, and it was just a standard car. So bags of room, bags of space in the back. If you've got two tall kids or, or whatever, then this is the car for you. Um, de-chromed around the windows and then chromed here. <laughs> Strange decision, but <laughs> who am I to argue with Skoda? They've got some fantastic ideas. It's, it's a nicely finished off car. The superb badge here in the headlights. Chrome Skoda grille with the winged arrow motif there. Electric boot release, that's just from a spring, it's, it's not powered, so you do have to put it down yourself. Plenty of room for luggage in here, it goes <laughs> right the way back to there. So uh, bags of space in there, it, it, it is a like a, a, a really big, uh, roomy car. What I find strange is that they've not gone over the top with the uh, accessories and, and all the goodies uh, on this car, however, if you just put the boot down, it's got comfort clothes or quiet clothes, whatever you want to call it. So uh, you don't need to wake your neighbours up. See what I mean about the leg room? Um, that seat is where I would normally drive, which is quite a long way back uh, in most cars. But here I could I could really stretch out. Um, it's a shame the back seats don't recline because uh, then it would be a really comfortable car. Loads of nice little touches. Airbags in the B pillar there, and uh, you've got coat hooks here. You've got an air vent here. It's it's just it's nice nicely finished. As I say, loads and loads of room. Seats are comfortable. You've got to put the headrests up a little bit, otherwise they stick right in the middle of your back. But uh, Apart from that, fine. As I say, for, for kids, it would be absolutely ideal in the back here. Isofix rear Chelsea tanker points. And uh, got a rear centre armrest there. I think that will actually load through. Let's just see. Yep. So, if you're going skiing in your uh, Skoda Superb 1.4 TSI, with all your big family, your big tall family, you can get the skis through the, the centre here too. I'll tell you what, the ski thing makes me think these days, with, with a dashboard, I mean this is a proper dashboard with proper instruments, uncluttered, easy to use, switches for everything, you know where everything is, you can see everything, but can you just imagine putting your skis in one of those new Mercedes S classes with the, the, where the dashboard is just one massive screen and just pushing your skis too far and cracking all your dashboard. It'd be about 20 grand for a new dashboard. <laughs> Absolutely ludicrous. Whoever thought that idea up once shooting. These seats as well as the, the ski bag there, the, uh, if you pull them forward, then you can, uh, you can load straight through as well. I've just remembered something. 
when I was saying about the uh, Skoda's designs, um, I forgot one of the most important features. It, it, it's only just come to me, I only just remembered it, and it's from a car I sold years ago, and I discovered it by accident. I just didn't know. So, you've got the boot. There you go, boot. Over here, there's, there's two electric switches, really. There's one here, and there's one there. That one, if you just want to get in the boot, you just release that. Now, watch what happens if I go over to this side, I click that, red brake light comes, and then I go over to the other handle, lift it up. It's a hatchback. How clever is that? So, hatchback, lean in, you've got your hard rear load cover there. Little strap there to pull it down. So that was the hatchback. Just go back to it, boot. Boot, soft close. Hatchback. <laughs> little things please little minds. But what a great, what a great idea that is. And I, and I, I can't remember seeing that on any other car. So anyway, now I've showed you that, I'll take you for a ride in it. So we've got two keys, that's, uh, that's one of them. Um, just whip my coat off. And again, uh, I, I really like the key, actually. I think it's very well finished. And the key fob too, <laughs> real well made. Um, I do like Skoda's. I have to say, I think uh, I think they're probably the uh, the best of the the VW product, really best value for money, certainly. Ninth of the fifth, two thousand and thirteen, at seven thousand five hundred and sixty-five miles, Silsbury Skoda. Twenty-third of the fourth, two thousand and fourteen, at seventeen thousand one hundred and fifty-nine miles, Silsbury Skoda. Seventeenth of seven, two thousand and fifteen, twenty-six thousand one hundred and seventy-five miles. Wolverhampton Skoda, 10th of the 5th, 2016, at 28,978 miles, uh, Ovalin Auto Repairs. 23rd of the 10th, 2021, at 46,206 miles, Car Care Reddit. There's a gap here between 2016 and 2021, um, which we can't find any service history for. Uh, however, looking at the car, and the mileage it did between those services, two services, it, it's not such a great uh, problem. To certainly not to us anyway, because we we bought the car and we wanted done if it was. Um, let's just get my shades on. So we've got aircon. It's a manual gearbox. Really, really nice. Whoever had this car didn't have hands like mine. The steering wheel is like brand new. Everything is 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 mint. It's just lovely. It, it, as I say, it, it, that's like when you get a car straight off the transporter. It's a, it's the same feel. Might have to ring them up and find out what hankering they use. Also, what cleaning products, because this is absolutely lovely. Sheep in the road again. Some cars coming up fairly fast behind me. Great gear change, nice light clutch. No point in the clutch being too light. You've got to be able to feel the pointing point for a smooth gear change, but th this is absolutely perfect. As I say, it's a nice big car. And 
just over the sheep here, just over the brow of the hill. You see skid marks there where obviously that's happened before. Just doing 40 miles an hour. Nice clear instrument display, all switches, rotary controls here. Don't have to take your eye off the off the road to switch your heater on, turn your fan on, whatever you want to do, your air con. It, it's um, it, it's. I, I'd like it if the, if this car had wind up windows. Um, it would be absolutely ideal. I watched a program the other day uh, about why cars are so expensive with Ginny Buckley and, and I, I've got to say I'd, Ginny's been in the job for a long time and I do like her but the program unbelievable um, we have campaigned to Autotrader for years before they actually um, put a marker on write-off cars on their website, I, I think it was probably me who gave them the most grief about it. And also um, the most grief about using HPI instead of a firm like VCheck or, or MotorCheck who actually check the salvage auctions as well. And this has been going on for years in the motor trade they don't have to, the insurance companies don't have to notify the MVRA, I think it is, that a car's being written off. So what happens, these wrecks, and the, and the reason they don't notify them is they know very well that somebody will get, give more money if it's not on the register, and then they'll just cock it up with used parts, leave airbags out, weld bits on, instead of uh, repairing it properly. Um, and just do basically a shoddy job and they should never go back on the road in, in my opinion. So it's voluntary. These cars or wrecks go into a salvage auction. Somebody goes and buys them, they repair them, put them back on the road and they're not on, they're not listed on HPI. I think VCheck came up with it first and they invented a program or wrote a program which trawled the salvage auctions looking for the registration number, chassis number and so on and honestly some of the cars it saved us a, a good few times when we've when we've looked on it and it shows you you know you, you see an advert so it's it's a cat C uh, it was it was written off because it, it was just minor damage to the boot and then when you see the photos it looks like a flipping 10 ton block of concrete's been dropped on it. So anyway, it's been going on for years. Um, a couple of the big firms have been caught out with it, especially on uh, social media. And uh, it's still going on. And, and to be fair, they don't care. A lot of firms buy the things in the first place, but even more privates buy them private people, works in a body shop during the week, buys a wreck, does it up, flogs it on the internet, second income. What made it worse is during lockdown, of course, a lot of these people, they, they, they had all week to fix these cars because they were being paid to stay at home. So even more, in my opinion anyway, even more, nobody knows how many of these cars are on the road that have been write-offs and not recorded, unrecorded write-offs. So anyway, the point is, we check. We, we started using VCheck, who were only for private uh, people, really. But because it was such a good system, we started using it probably before anybody else. And, and I, I was in touch with the owner of VCheck. And um, I mean, it, it's, it's just incredible. Uh, when we got talking, the, the amount of cars and the Mercedes Benz, there's, there's nearly new Mercedes Benz on there. And, and 
a Ferrari, a £200,000 Ferrari. So anyway, we use motor check and V-check. Oh, sorry, we don't use V-check anymore, but uh, <laughs> motor check is the, the, the same thing to all intents and purposes these days. So we use that to make sure, you know, we, we do as much as we can to make sure that our cars are proper. Uh, but you need to be so careful these days. Anyway, back to this. This is a, a nice car. A good price rangey car. Um, ideal for a big family. I'm, I'm getting fed up with these people behind me, so I'm gonna let them go by. I mean, I, I've got I've got long legs, but I mean that'll go back there. I, I can't even I can't even press the clutch in. So uh, <laughs> ideal. Oh, I can't come in this way. But here we go. We've also got height and reach adjustable steering. Look how how far that steering wheel comes out. So why, what would that be if you if you got long legs and short arms like a, a Tyrannosaurus Rex or something? Then this is the ideal car for you. So let's get that back there. Proper handbrake too. Oh yeah, also in that that program they were going on about shortage of cars and accusing the manufacturers of making luxury cars with more of these semiconductors or computer chips so they make more money because they make more money on the bigger cars who wouldn't you know they, they're calling the motor trade for being sensible who wouldn't do that you've got you've, you've got your profits to make your shareholders your staff to look after to stay in business but then in the, in, the, in the next breath, they were saying that electric cars have three to 4,000 semiconductors in it, which is more than luxury cars, but they're not suggesting that they, they stop making electric cars so that they can make more smaller cars for people. You know, it, 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 it just, it's ludicrous. This camera here, when I checked it the other day, the battery was swelled up so much in it that I think it's damaged because it just keeps going off as, of its own accord or it keeps recording, it's showing it's recording, but it doesn't actually record anything, um, which is what, why it's there in the worst view. Back to this. Nice, simple car, except for the tailgate, which is overly complicated, but it drives nice, it's economical. All you would need round town Put the back seats down and load through. The electric windows here, electric door mirrors. And they, uh, let's just turn that. There you go, so that's, that's working. Turn that over there. Get around this corner. There. So electric door mirrors are all working. Nice cloth seat. Really nice and comfortable, I have to say. Backrest there, adjustable backrest. That's heightened adjustment there. Certainly inside this car's like new.
got uh, a little bit of a rattle, but that's my uh, aftershave bottle there. Oh, I've let put the seat down there. I have to readjust my mirror. Got a good turn of acceleration as well for a, a 1.4, but that 1.4 engine, my, uh, I think it's probably the same engine as in my girlfriend's Audi A1, and uh, I've done half go, especially when she's driving it. I think we just beat the rain again today. Radio CD. I uh, <laughs> I had the radio on for a very short while on the way on the journey up this morning. Goodness me! <laughs> No wonder the disc jockeys talk, talk so much because the records are garbage. pheasants were harmed during the making of this video, although I may have spoke too soon. Gosh, look at all these. That one don't want to move. <laughs> it's a pheasant jam. Like it's like a road runner. I have to, I'll have to be careful. There might, might be a cliff face here or an anvil dropping on me. There we go. All that grass and shrubbery. 
and then they walk down the road. Back to the car. Uh, it, it really is a nice car. Great family car. Just trying to think, well, what else is there to say about it? You're on the left hand side. To be honest, I can't really. The, the rev counter. The rev counter and the speedo are pretty much the same. That's a bad design. That really is a bad design. Because at first glance, you struggle. Certainly if you were matching the revs to the speed, it would be difficult to see well, how fast you were going at first glance. But anyway, rev counter is on the left. And that goes up in in increments of 10, 20, 30, 40. The speedo on the right, again, goes up in increments of 10, 20, 30. And it, it's kind of the same design. In the rev counter, there's a temperature gauge, coolant temperature gauge. In the speedo, there's your fuel gauge. In the centre between the two gauges is an information display. At this moment in time, it's telling me that it's 12 minutes past nine in the morning. I'm in third gear and I should change up. But I'm going uphill, so I know I shouldn't. How many miles I've got left before I need to fill up? trip computer and it's got kilometers per hour there the speed I'm sure there will be a way of changing that to miles per hour um, and then over here on your wiper stalk indicators are on the left wipers on the, the right And then over here, in the end of the wiper stalk, if I click that, that tells me your average miles per gallon. Click it again. Instantaneous miles per gallon. Click it again. That tells me how long I've been driving this morning. Again, outside te air temperature, and then miles, average miles per hour. And how far I've gone, which so far this morning is 34 miles. Your climate control here, aircon switch there. Of course, aircon only works when the fan's on. So your heater control there, rotary control. Don't have to look at the road. Your fan, you don't have to look at the road. And then where you want the direction of the airflow. All nice. Heated rear screen. And that, I assume, is um, recirculating air. So a good car, well built, nothing in it you don't need. I do like the tailgate, I suppose it's, um, <laughs> it, it must have taken some engineering to make that, I'll tell you, I wouldn't like to have to do it. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video, ta-da.